Join us as we study the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro, from its purpose to its inhabitants to its astonishing statistics. Number 10. The meaning is up for debate. Okay, let's consider statues and monuments in their more expansive sense for a moment. Each and every time one of these is created, it has a certain purpose, right? For instance, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. is intended to represent President Abraham Lincoln and the freedom he granted to so many people throughout his tenure in office. That's a very clear interpretation, and one that's justified, if I may add. However, the significance of the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro is officially a little ambiguous. Because many people have quite different perspectives on it than do others. It's possible that you will simply glance at it and conclude that it represents Jesus Christ as the center of the Christian religion. And to some extent, it is true, but not always the meaning is reflected in the structure. Some people feel that the statue represents Christ as he would have appeared on the cross when they look at the statue and envision him in that position. Indicating that this is a statue honoring the death of Christ, whose rising into heaven provided all people life after death giving the statue a profoundly heavenly connotation. Others, however, see Christ's arms as a representation of open arms rather than as his position on the fabled crucifixion. Jesus commanded his followers to love God and love one another, to love one's neighbor as oneself, and to give to those in need. As a result, many people in Rio de Janeiro interpret it as a reminder that they should treat others well, both inside and outside of their nation, and declare that statue is incredibly essential for us in Rio and for the people of Brazil. In addition to the religious sign, it also contains this emblem of extended arms that welcomes people. It's also meant to imply that we are gracious hosts, a native Brazilian added. To be clear, there is no correct or incorrect interpretation of the statue's significance. This only illustrates how unclear the statue's design and placement are. Which is okay because statues are unquestionably works of art and are designed to be interpreted differently. Number 9. It was designed to combat godlessness. We've done a lot of research into the potential meaning the statue may have given its location and other factors. Let's start with a simpler inquiry, though, why was it even constructed? Given that the monument is Christ the Redeemer and that it was probably constructed to showcase Brazilian religion, you would assume this is a strange question. That may have been the case in other nations, but in Brazil in 1920, the situation was a little more difficult. You know, when the Brazilian Republic was established in 1889, that's when it all really began. They divided the church and the state as a part of this new republic. Something that numerous other nations have done over time. However, many who adhered to the Catholic faith, which was the country's predominant religion, believed that this division would cause many people to stray from the spiritual and religious paths. Over time, especially after World War I, their anxieties deepened. They thought they wanted a monument to serve as a constant reminder of their God and who was watching over them at the time because they had noticed an increase in godlessness. Thus, Ator de Silva Costa was chosen in 1920 to design and create the statue that would stand watch over the city and serve as a constant reminder of Christ. You could counter that the Catholic Church was being petty by erecting a statue as a daily reminder, but you must keep in mind that they weren't acting selfishly. The statue was created as a reminder that there is a better path one that does not involve using evil means and they were simply trying to make sure that everyone was aware of this. And it succeeded in making things obvious, making Christ the Redeemer one of the most cherished monuments in the entire world. Despite the fact that almost didn't go that way. Number 8. Christ with a Ball Whether we are aware of it or not, Statue makers go through a lengthy procedure to ensure that the sculptures they are creating in the future appear well, are crafted well, and have the intended message. Ator de Silva Costa was similar to many other fabled statues, and not unlike them. For example, the Christ the Redeemer statue initially had a radically different design concept. What would it appear to be like? Well, the majority of it was similar. 
The major adjustments were made to the arms of the standing Christ, who was facing the sun and gazing out over the city. In particular, what he was holding in his arms. His hands were empty at the moment, but in the original drawings, he held something in each. He would be holding a cross in one hand and a globe in the other. The cross serves as a clear representation of how Christ bore the cross while being crucified by hanging on it. The globe also resembles the line from the children's song, he's got the whole world in his grasp, giving the statue a very clear meaning in the process. The project's leaders were initially highly pleased with its concept, but as word spread about it, it earned the moniker Christ with a ball because the markings left by the numerous objects on the globe would not be visible from a distance that is how it would seem, which is where the majority of Rio residents would view the statue. Ator de Silva Costa then sought the advice of another Brazilian artist and the, the rendering and construction of the Christ the Redeemer statue took place. Number 7. Lightning damage has been done. I want you to take a moment to consider the Christ the Redeemer and consider how tall it is in relation to Rio de Janeiro. If you're unaware, it's a little over half a mile up a mountain inside the city. Another reason for the elevation was to make sure that everyone could see the Christ the Redeemer statue wherever they went. However, as you presumably already know, difficulties from nature become more numerous the higher you are in the air. Lightning is the issue in this situation. Even though Christ the Redeemer isn't built of metal, it nonetheless functions something like a lightning rod because it stands out and may attract lightning in its own unique way. Therefore, it shouldn't come as a big surprise that lightning has struck it several times during its roughly 100-year history. However, 2008 was by far one of the worst years. The statue's face and hands were injured by the lightning that struck Rio de Janeiro during a severe electrical storm. Thankfully, the statue was able to be restored to its former splendor, with the exact same material coming from the exact same quarry as the original construction materials. Number 6. It took almost a decade to make. Modern construction projects pale in comparison to those that have been completed in the past. Despite all the advancements, many tasks were still carried out by hand even in the 1920s. Even if large construction vehicles had already been developed, hardly everyone in the world had access to them. So much time and work went into creating the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. Remember, it was constructed atop a mountain. But time and distance, rather than a lack of finances, were the actual obstacles to the creation of Christ the Redeemer. Although Ator de Silva Costa may have designed the statue, he had to travel to France to locate a sculptor to give it life. He would track down Paul Landowski, who over the course of nine years would take the design, produce his own version of the components that would go into making the statue, with some additions and modifications, and ship them to Brazil done. Not exactly. He created the pieces using supplies he had in France. Once in Brazil, they were transformed into reinforced concrete pieces to better endure the elements and other problems. So, by the time the statue was finished, approximately 10 years had passed since it had actually started. Number 5. By 2030, it might start to look different. As we just mentioned, reinforced concrete is used to construct much of the monument. It is reliable and sturdy, and as we also mentioned, it may be simple to fix. But what you see is the statue is actually soapstone, not the concrete you might expect. Why is that covering on it? They wanted the statue to appear lighter and to be more noticeable as well as more aesthetically beautiful, not unlike the Statue of Liberty, which is actually constructed of copper but has a patina that gives it a green appearance. So, soapstone was employed. The issue is that, despite utilizing soapstone to maintain Christ the Redeemer for almost a century, the soapstone supply from the quarry they have been using has officially run out. In other words, they are unable to give it the same hue they have been for the entirety of its life. It won't be coated in a different substance, but it won't be the same soapstone that gave it its current hue. The Christ the Redeemer statue will undergo its subsequent significant renovation in 2030. 
The statue will probably appear much darker than it did before when that occurs. Number 4. Restoration has been carried out in a natural manner and for visitors. As we've previously mentioned, since its official completion in 1931, the Christ the Redeemer statue has been under construction. Damages needed to be repaired, graphics needed to be redone, and so on and so forth. You might be surprised to learn that a significant portion of the restoration work was completed in the previous 40 years. Because the Christ the Redeemer monument underwent its first comprehensive renovation in 1980. You wonder, what occurred in 1980? That would be when Pope John Paul II arrived. He was in Brazil, therefore it only made sense that the local Catholic Church would make sure the statue was immaculate for him when he arrived. You could counter that none were more significant than the one performed for the Pope, with the exception of the one involving lightning damage. Number 3. Going Up For a long time, the only method to reach the Christ the Redeemer monument was to climb 200 stairs up the side of a mountain, which might be beneficial for your workout routine but isn't exactly enjoyable if you're not in great form. However, you have to accomplish that to reach the statue. But by 2003, everyone had come to the conclusion that this wasn't the wisest course of action. As a result, an escalator was really erected to enable you get to the statue more quickly and with less exertion on your side. You could have to start walking again if those escalators collapse, so be careful. Number 2. Graffiti is a national crime. Sadly, vandals and troublemakers enjoy the concept of spray painting or graffitiing a piece of art. And in 2010, a few of these vandals made the decision to deface the Christ the Redeemer statue while it was undergoing refurbishment. There was no official response since, in all honesty, it had never happened before. Until they did it and the mayor of Rio called it a crime against the nation, anyone who is foolish enough to imitate them can formally be referred to as an enemy of the state. Number 1. A chapel is located at the statue's base. The Christ the Redeemer monument is without a doubt one of the most popular attractions in Rio de Janeiro, and for good reason. However, some people have wished to see it go beyond just being a tourist attraction. And because of this, they constructed a little chapel at the base of the monument in 2006, which was its official 75th birthday or anniversary. A location where you could legally wed and hold a little reception as well. Why anybody would want to do that, you might wonder. You must keep in mind that this is a memorial to Christ, not merely a statue, and that many people get married in churches and other similar establishments to get the blessing of God. And what better location than one where there is a huge statue of Christ to get that blessing? Thank you everybody for watching. What did you think of these details and the statue's background, which is located atop Rio de Janeiro? Have you discovered a lot of brand new information regarding it? Are you astonished by how long it has existed? Please let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the channel again soon.